Hello, this is West Virginia Tim. This is not going to be one of my typical videos where I show you from start to finish how to build a cache. But instead today, I want to show you something that someone showed me that is a log dispensing mechanism that you can use in building any gadget cache or a microprocessor based cache. I've kind of moved to building microprocessor or what I call smart caches. And this mechanism works great with those caches, but it also could work great with a gadget cache because it is a very, it, it's a mechanism that has, that holds the cache container with just a simple touch drops the cache container out. And so I'm going to show you in this video how to build this. This can be built in probably a half hour with only four or five components. But first, I really need to thank David Wagner. And his caching name is DJW House. And he has a video just like this one, probably better, that shows you how he built this. And his video, you can look it up on YouTube, it's Wired pound sign 07. David Wagner, wild, wired, pound sign 07. My West Virginia accent gets in the way. But this cache mech, so picture a cache, and the bottom of it, you know, only has a hole an inch and a, a quarter big, and it, this is sticking out the bottom. The cacher can reach up and can barely feel the cache, but yet he can't reach it or grab it. It has to be released. So you can build a gadget cache that has a, a pull or a push or something that easily releases the cache and the cache falls down. It's easily placed back by just a simple touch, but it's easily removed just like this. So I haven't given up on uh, other videos on building gadget caches. I have three or four videos sitting on my computer. I just need to, to get them and edit them and get them out. Uh, but this, I'm so excited about this cash, cash release mechanism that I wanted to show you this because if you're a cash builder, there's a lot of different ways you can use this with a motor, um, a servo, or a mechanical means to release a cash. And it prevents you from having to put a lock on a cash. So watch this video and you're going to see in three or four easy steps how you can build this. Hey, thanks for watching. Okay, let's take a look at the components that we're going to need. Now, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to build it. But right now, let's just look at the components. First of all, you have to start, of course, with the, your, your cache container. I love these valves. Now, this has got some black paint on it. But I love these valves. You can, I bought this on Amazon. Of course, it's uh, plastic. But the reason I love these valves is because of the size of the log sheet. Uh, it will hold a log sheet that's four columns. And of course, I print my log sheets on both sides. That's a lot of signatures. So it really keeps um, maintenance down. So knowing that I've got a cash container this size, then I just got to figure out how big a piece of pipe. And this piece of pipe happens to be uh, 1.25 inches PVC. So uh, the other components I'll need, I bought this on Amazon. This is a cabinet latch and of course it moves like this uh, so this is a cabinet latch i got this at lowe's and of course this thing that i'm going to use for a hinge is um, you know used for drywall so very simply and i'll show you more later this is going to be attached to the child proof lock and then we will attach this on top here with a little screw through here and then you can see very simply how by pushing this up or a motor, um, this will release the cache because this, we're going to be drilling a hole in the side of here and this will be in here. Um, and so it takes very, very little effort to lift this. So you can put a servo uh, or you could put a motor or you could even make it so it could be manually manipulated by tying a string, uh, pushing a stick, there's a lot of ways to drop the cache. Okay, now let's look at uh, let's look at building it. Okay, let me show you the first step. I drilled a hole in my cabinet latch uh, right near the back, as far back as I could get it. I drilled a hole, 
and then I laid the cabinet latch on here flush with my metal and marked it and then I drilled a hole in my metal. Now I'll take a screw here and I'll show you this in a second. I'm going to take this screw, put it through here, but also I drilled a hole in what I'm using as my hinge uh, right back at the back. This is a large one and so if I put that right there and then when I move it up like this you can see this will all set flat. Uh, I'll show you the next, I'll, I'll show it to you here in just a second when I get together. This screw and this hole is really just to prevent my uh, cabinet latch uh, from moving and turning. Okay, uh, so I put my screw through there. Now I'm, I'm going to tighten the second one here, but I put two, two nuts here and uh, I'll tighten each one down separately, one at a time, but that will give me a lot less likelihood of this coming loose. I might even take some epoxy glue and put over the heads of the nuts and around this edge just to prevent this from moving. I like to, while well, I have it and I'm building it, I'd rather build it really, really strong to prevent future uh, problems with maintenance. Uh, after I tighten this down and put a little epoxy here, I'll probably take my uh, grinder and just cut that off. Now, if you'll notice here, there's my latch. And so this, uh, and we'll show you next step here, but I'm going to attach this up here. Uh, but you can now see it's coming together here. So I'll show you the next step here in just a second. My hinge is now secured. Everything is really, really tight. I've got my hole here. But the next step is to drill a hole in my PVC that's big enough to fit where my latch is going to go. So this will be connected up here like this. So I've drilled a hole, I just marked it, and drilled a hole big enough so that my latch will operate this way. So when my uh, cash goes up in this tube, this rim on this cash will catch on this uh, uh, cabinet latch right here. So now that I've got my hole drilled, I'll just mark this hole and I'll attach this on here. The last step is completed. I've now attached it to this, to our um, uh, PVC. If you'll notice, I attached it twice to prevent it from, you know, turning from this moving sideways. It, it, as long as you only have one screw, it can pivot. And, you know, I like to think a cache might be out uh, for, you know, four or five years. And a lot of my caches will get five, six hundred thousand, you know, visits. So it's got to be very, very strong. It's got the top screw, so with two screws. So I could really, really tighten it down. The next screw, if you'll notice, goes the other way. And the reason why is. If you look in this way, you can actually see uh, the screw, or, you know, going all the way across. Because I have found sometimes a cashier will get really, really strong and shove this really, really hard. And if they shove it, I don't want it to come out the top and lay inside the cache. So this way, a cashier comes and literally pushes up and uh, the lip on the cash container uh, frees it. And then simply by releasing this lever. And if you'll notice what I've done, uh, you figure out where your ridge is and then you make it just a little bit further. Um, you make it just a little bit further so, they, so the cashier can't reach up and grab the cash, but at the same time, they can easily push it up until it latches. Um, this cat is, uh, it, it's, it's nearly impossible to keep out of the videos. Uh, but notice how simple, how easy, and how little this, um, little movement that this takes. This, the cat's actually driving me crazy. Uh, it just really just takes just an inch or two. Uh, so there it is attached, and there it is, and, um, Easy to make, uh, half hour, an hour, and you've got this made. Okay, thanks for watching.